I don't have a funny opening skit for you this time. Well, I did have one planned, but I'm too lazy to actually get round to doing it. So instead, I just want to say you should join my Discord server. There'll be a link down there somewhere, probably. Oh, why has my coffee gone cold? That's disgusting. This episode begins with an inner monologue from Yugi on top of the school roof, which ends with this quote. I'll beat Pegasus at his own game, whatever that is. It's obviously dual monsters. What else is it gonna be? Joey receives a tape from his sister, and in this tape, she goes on about wanting to see him again one last time before she goes fully blind. And my question is, if they're biological siblings, why are their accents so different? Like, even as a kid, Joey sounds Brooklyn, but his sister doesn't. What's that all about? Yugi receives an envelope with some cards in it, and it was delivered to Grandpa's shop. But for some reason, this shop doesn't have a letterbox or anywhere to put the mail. So it ends up being just wedged between the door frame. Why not just deliver it to Yugi's house and if Yugi actually lives at the game shop how the fuck does he receive normal post so Yugi opens this envelope and finds a bunch of random cards inside and he says it's an invitation to the tournament at Duelist Kingdom is this kid psychic how the fuck does he know that because these are just Yu-Gi-Oh cards there's no writing on them how the fuck are you supposed to know this is an invitation to something side note if this is an invitation to the tournament why wasn't it included in the first package with the glove and the VHS tape there is literally no reason reason to send those things separately. It's the next day and Yugi is showing his friends the cards he received from Peggy. And can I just ask, what the fuck is this boat card for? There's no information whatsoever written on the card. It's just a picture of a boat. Yugi says he's going to join the tournament so he can attempt to get his grandfather back. And Tia goes, but you can't go. It could be dangerous. It's just a children's card game, Tia. Do you just want Yugi's grandpa to remain a vegetable? Tia's an evil bitch. Pass it on. We then get this direct quote from Tristan. I still can't believe it. Pegasus used some kind of weird spell to grant your grandpa's soul away. And now he's toying with you. Forcing you to duel in the tournament. Thank you Tristan. Thank you so much. The previously on segment at the beginning of the episode and Yugi's narration recapping the events of episode 2 wasn't quite enough to help the information sink in. I'd be so confused without you explaining it for the third time. Here's another great quote from Tristan. Check this out. According to this card, the tournament winner takes home the grand prize of three million dollars. Where does it say that? That is just a picture of a pile of gold. Is Tristan psychic? Did he count all the gold coins? Is there three million gold coins on there? Why is Yugi so happy in this shot? Even his line delivery feels like he don't give a shit about grandpa. Yugi and Joey meet up on the roof and they start talking about how they first met and we see flashbacks of Joey and Tristan bullying Yugi by taking his Millennium Puzzle and not giving it back, which is then followed by Joey saying this. Eh, ah, you mean when we were playing Keep Away of the Millennium Puzzle? We just wanted to toughen you up so you could stand up to the real bullies. No, Joey, you literally threw a piece of the puzzle into a swimming pool. You was just being a dick. Later on in the flashback, we see Joey and Tristan after being beaten up by an even bigger bully. And as the shot zooms out, we get to see this. What's with the giant armbands? And why is his head like that? That head angle is not physically possible. It looks like something out of a horror movie. Look, even Yugi is terrified. The bully then goes to continue beating Joey and Tristan, and Yugi jumps in front of him going, These guys are my friends! What? Why? Those dickheads deserved it. There was no need for you to jump in the way. You should have just left the bully to it. As you would expect, Yugi also receives a beating. And we see Tristan here smiling. So he finds watching a child get beaten very entertaining. Tristan is a massive dick. Pass it on. Joey and Yugi are still talking about the flashback and we then get this quote from Yugi. Well, at least you retrieved the lost puzzle piece. If you hadn't have done that, I could never have solved the Manelian puzzle. Mate, it was just at the bottom of a swimming pool. You're telling me you can't get wet? Let me guess, we can't feed you after midnight either. After the bully incident, Joey apologises to Yugi saying, Nyeh, I want to apologise Yugi. I've been acting like a real jerk. So you admit that you were just being an arsehole then and are only now wanting to be his friend. So your earlier statement about just wanting to toughen him up was just bullshit. We are now at the boat that is going to take all the duelists to Duelist Kingdom. And this dude is talking to the duelists. And my question is, why the fuck is there a lens flare in this shot? This flare serves no purpose. Let's play a quick game. This one's called Spot the Main Character. Hmm. 
This one's pretty difficult. So Joey tries to sneak onto the boat and gets caught, whereas Tia and Tristan manage to sneak on via a cargo container. Why didn't he just sneak in with them? The rules say that you need star chips to be in this tournament. Each invited duelist was given two star chips. So Yugi decides he's going to give Joey one of his chips, which he does directly in front of the security guard, which the guards just allow for some reason. Surely that's against the rules. That's gotta be some sort of safety violation for sure. What if Joey, this uninvited guest, was a dangerous criminal? Those guards should be fired. So Yugi and Joey are just chilling on the boat when this chick known as Mai comes over to talk to Yugi. Mai says that Joey deserves to be crushed in the games of which joey responds with please crush me what the actual fuck four kids that's very un four kids of you joey is a pervert confirmed during this scene rex the kid in the red hat has his lips moving but no words are coming out so the dubbing team just forgot to give him lines weevil then comes into the room and is like hey ain't you that kid yugi how does everybody know about yugi like okay sure it is possible for the rumor that a kid named yugi beat kaiba to become world spread that's possible okay rumors are rumors that's what happens but how does everybody know what yugi looks like i doubt a detailed description of yugi was part of the rumor this frame isn't important right now i'm just saving it for future reference in this scene mai thinks she is above the rules and is causing a scene and goes full karen mode bitch Please fuck off, nobody likes a Karen. She also seems to have three star chips. Rex comes along and starts talking about his VIP room and Maya's like, hmm, can I see? This grown ass bitch is literally flirting with a 15 year old. She is 24, she needs to back the fuck off. So Rex takes Maya up to his room and she challenges him to a duel. And if she wins, she gets to keep the room and he has to fuck off. And if he wins, he gets a kiss. Weird conditions aside, this whole scene is a huge fucking tease. This is a show about playing card games and we don't get to see anyone playing card games. Games. We get to see a before and after of the duel, but not the duel itself. Don't fucking tease us like that. We're here for one thing, card games. Show us card games. So Weevil decides to talk to Yugi outside and asks to see his Exodia cards. And we then get this direct quote. For a long time I've been trying to come up with some sort of strategy to finally beat these cards, but I couldn't come up with any. <laughs> and then proceeds to just throw the cards overboard and into the water. Firstly, what a dick. Secondly, Yugi is too trusting of strangers. Considering those cards are supposedly very rare, he shouldn't let anyone touch those cards. And thirdly, Weevil is a regional champion, but doesn't know how to counter Exodia. There's loads of ways to counter Exodia. How does a regional champion not have any counter for Exodia? After that dick move, Weevil then says, Now there's no one that can challenge me. <coughs> Weevil is not good for the throw. Remember that unimportant frame from earlier? This kid has the right arm of Exodia, meaning he probably has the other pieces, meaning he can challenge you. Also, if Exodia is that rare, why does this random kid have one of the arms? After Weevil walks away, Joey then decides to jump off the fucking boat and dive headfirst into the water to try and retrieve the cards. What the actual fuck are you doing? The second those cards hit the water, they are no good. Ruined. Mush. You are risking your damn life for soggy, useless cards. We then get this direct quote from Yugi. Joey, where are you? Are you fucking blind? He just jumped in the water, did you not see him? After Joey promises to retrieve the cards, we then get another quote from Yugi. Joey, they're not worth drowning over. And finally, someone has some goddamn common sense. It's only took three episodes and for someone to nearly drown for us to get any, but I'll take what I can get. While Joey is still in the water, he then says this. Yeah, at least this time there's something I can do to help someone I care about. This isn't helpful at all, Joey. This is just plain stupid. I feel like Joey is the kind of guy that would willingly be stabbed just to protect a deck of cards. Jesus Christ, I take back what I said about common sense because Yugi jumps in after Joey instead of getting help. 
Tyler. So Tristan and Tia come to the rescue with a rope ladder, meaning Joey and Yugi can now climb to safety. Once they are back on the boat, Joey reveals that he was able to retrieve two cards. How the fuck are those cards still intact? Are they made of plastic? Joey then goes on about how useless he is and how he can't even help his sister, and the others have no idea he even had a sister. What sort of friends are they when they don't even know Joey has a sister? And not just a sister, a sister that's currently in hospital. Like, what? So the episode ends with Yugi and friends looking out towards the island at the front of the boat. And can I just ask, how the fuck has Tia and Tristan not got caught yet? It's now daybreak and they are just casually out in the open and they still haven't been caught by security guards. Lo and behold, this episode doesn't have any duels in it and my script is half the size. And taking that into account is making me dread the episodes where duels span over multiple episodes. Oh god I'm fucked, what have I gotten myself into? Why did I think this series was a good idea?